Well, why would you want to summit Mount Adams, then run to Mount Hood, and also summit Mount Hood? That's a fair question. It seems extremely long and hard, uh, but not quite impossible. So why not just give it a try? As far as I know, nobody has ever done that. I prepared and planned for this adventure for almost a year, uh, run most of the trails, uh, climbed Adams and Hood multiple times, and mapped out the entire route, with bypass routes. On May 22nd, the Memorial Day weekend, the weather looked pretty decent, conditions looked good, so we gave it a go. We left Portland at 11 o'clock, then drove to Hood River, had a great lunch at Freem's with beer, uh, got stoked up at uh, Stoke Coffee Roasters just next door, then drove up to the uh, um, Chart Lake uh, Ranger Station where we got the permits, and continued up to the Cold Springs Trailhead. The weather looked pretty decent, uh, a little cloudy, but not too bad. So the plan is to cruise pretty smoothly, uh, not exhaust myself, because I will have still 130 miles to go after that, so we'll try to save some energy and take it quite easy. So Mount Adams round trip is going to be at least 10 hours, depending on conditions. I did pack the snowshoes. Um, there apparently is quite a bit of new snow on the soft surface. We're at 6,300 feet now. Uh, right by the turn off here of the Round the Mountain Trail. And yeah, this is not going to go uh, for running. So the bypass route will let me down to the uh, Cold Springs Trailhead again and then I will uh, take an alternative trail that will connect me to the PCT later on. I was really glad I packed the snowshoes. The snow was pretty soft and I would have sunk it in quite a bit. Um, so with the snowshoes I was able to pretty much take a straight line up to the summit and I think that was much more efficient than using crampons. Mount Hood in the background amazing it cleared up right now it's really sunny really warm almost no wind um, passing 10,000 feet weather is still good fall summit actually is clear again I'm I'd say halfway up to the fall summit the climb was very magical it was just you know perfect and Conditions were great, the weather was amazing, and I could see Mount Hood. And only on the summit, the clouds came in for a, a short amount of time before I headed down. Round trip time was less than seven hours. That was a new record for me. When I got down to the Cold Springs Trailhead, Christina had a huge fire going, and uh, it was just really nice to uh, sit down for a few minutes and eat something, and then I changed into running gear. and was out in the, into the long night again. So from the Cold Springs Trailhead, I took the bypass route that I had prepared. That led me down the road first, then on a trail, and then I connected on forest roads to the PCT. It was a terrible section. It's just a lot of fog, and it never ended, and I got lost once, and oh, I was so tired. When I finally reached the PCT in the early morning hours, 
I was soaking wet, I was really tired and I had over 20 miles to go and I just couldn't imagine how I could possibly get there. Uh, we had talked about uh, an intermediate stop at Surprise Lakes Indian Camp and that's precisely what happened. Orsina saw that I was much slower um, by following the spot and she drove there and was waiting for me and, and that was just amazing. I, I, it was one of the biggest reliefs that I, I had during this trip. I was able to change into new shoes and uh, warmed up with some hot broth and chocolate and quite quickly I was back on the trail and uh, ready to tackle the next 15 miles uh, through the Indian Heaven Wilderness to Crest Camp. The Indian Heaven Wilderness was beautiful. It was foggy and uh, somewhat wet but after uh, the refueling stop at Surprise Lakes Indian Camp, uh, I was ready. There was also some snow, but uh, nothing really dramatic. The next stop was Crest Camp. Uh, again, I took in some hot food and relaxed for a little bit and then went out again. Uh, from there, it was almost all downhill to Stabler, uh, to the Hemlock Lake area where Ursina was going to wait again. I got into that resupply station by the aid of some flower power. The car was ready, hot water was ready, Ursina was ready. It was great to be there and I was going to nap for 30 minutes or so. Uh, before the next long night. Uh, took care of my feet as well. They were in pretty good shape still. Had some hot food, recharged batteries and whatnot, and soon I was out on the way again. It was shortly past seven when I left and I knew this was gonna be a very tough section with two massive climbs and um, over 30 miles to go without any resupply. So I would basically be at the Bridge of Gods sometime in the early morning hours, hopefully. The other aspect that worried me was the distance. I was supposed to be at about 62 miles, but I was almost at 76 miles and uh, that wasn't good news. This bridge was somewhat reflective of the night. It was a terrible night. Uh, nothing seemed to work. I had a really hard time staying awake and I knew I couldn't sit down. I would just fall asleep immediately. So I kept moving, but I could barely move straight. Um, and then the fog set in and that made things much worse. I could barely see and it was really hard to run. Finally, after two massive climbs, I reached the Three Corner Rock turnoff, but things only got worse from there. The vegetation was really thick and uh, just completely soaked and I got all wet. Just before the sunrise, I reached the Bridge of Gods. It, it was amazing. There were no cars and I just crossed the bridge, which never felt so long, but it was definitely an amazing moment. I was at 103 miles and that was scary and I knew I was gonna need some rest there. I slept about two hours in Cascade Locks and then had a real breakfast with a lot of coffee and bacon and hash browns and uh, that was amazing. That just put me back on track and I was ready for the next section. I wasn't as slow as the snail but definitely not fast and I grinded up this uh, steep climb and uh, eventually reached the top and it was foggy and quite windy but um, temperatures were actually quite pleasant. Climbing some uh, stairs after 120 miles, no big deal. Let's go. Bottom Lake was another unplanned aid station, and that really helped to split up that long section to Lolo Pass. Uh, I had some food and then was on the way again. 
as I got closer to Lolo Pass, the fog and the clouds cleared up and Mount Hood was popping out. And Wow, what an amazing view, but it was also very scary at the same time. At Lolo Pass, I decided to sleep for 30 minutes just to get ready for the third night and for the very tough and steep climb up to Timberline and then eventually up to Mount Hood. Just before the uh, Sandy River crossing, I got another amazing glimpse of Mount Hood. It was foggy down there, but the summit was still out up in the light and uh, it, it was really amazing and very emotional. The Sandy River had much more water than last week. Uh, I was definitely going to get wet, but the crossing was, was not too hard. Uh, once I was on the other side, I started grinding up to uh, the Paradise Park Loop and eventually to Timberline. I felt surprisingly strong on that climb up to Paradise Park and at times was really euphoric. Uh, it, was, it was a strange feeling, almost uh, an out-of-body experience. The snow from last week was almost gone and it was much easier to move. I got up to Timberline at uh, 20 minutes past midnight and uh, started uh, taking care of myself by um, massaging the feet and uh, eating some uh, tasty food. I, I chose a three berry crumble and that was uh, pretty amazing. It was windy and, and the parking lot was, was as busy as usual with climbers at that point. It took me about an hour to refuel and change into climbing gear. And I finally left at 1.20 um, and started climbing up to the hawk's back. I was moving pretty consistently but it was it was rough and windy and I really had to focus on executing the mission. I finally reached the hawk's back at around 4 o'clock. There were a lot of climbers waiting there. I just put on my helmet and continued straight up the old chute. I reached the summit at 6 o'clock and it was very emotional, almost surreal. I could see Adams far in the distance and I could see St. Helens and Mount Rainier as well. Uh, but it was very hard to believe that I started all the way back at Mount Adams. After 64 hours and 48 minutes, I was done. Literally done, physically done, emotionally done. It was the toughest thing I've ever done, by far. The total distance was 158 miles, much longer than I had planned for.